Hello, and welcome to Tektronix. Today we're going to be talking about how to utilize the XY display feature on a DPO and MSO 4000 series oscilloscope. While we may normally use oscilloscopes for viewing voltage versus time, or a YT display, the XY display allows us to view the relationship between two varying voltages and their phase differences. So I'm using a signal generator to produce two waveforms, and it is important to note that these waveforms are both sine functions of equal frequency and amplitude, and are also in phase with one another, which is why you may only see one of the waveforms for the time being. Select Acquire, XY Display, Triggered XY, and Cursors. And this is what's really just so extraordinary and cool about this particular series and higher of oscilloscopes. Not only can we view the XY display, but we can also view the corresponding waveforms and all four XY cursor readouts simultaneously. As you can see, channel 1 voltage is represented by X values, and channel 2 voltage is represented by Y values. We can use multipurpose A to adjust the lower bound for time, and multipurpose B to adjust the upper bound for time. However, as we adjust our A and B, it will also affect the values for our X's, Y's, R's, and Thetas. Our four XY cursor readouts show us rectangular and polar coordinates, as well as product and ratio. As you can see, we have a nice straight line with a ratio of approximately 1 volt per volt. This tells us that the waveforms have equal frequency, amplitude, and are in phase. However, as I change the phase, we begin to get a Lissajou curve at 45 degrees. As I increase the phase up to 90 degrees, we begin to see a circle. And you can see up in the waveform display how the phase is increasing between the two signals. As we move to 135 degrees, we have the same Lissajou curve but reflected across the y-axis. And as we move up to 180 degrees, we have our same line that we started with but reflected across the y-axis. At 225 degrees, we have the same Lissajou curve that we had at 135 degrees. And at 270 degrees, we're back to our circle. At 315 degrees, we have the same Lissajou curve that we had at 45 degrees. And at 360 degrees, we're back to where we started. Now we're going to look at an example of waveforms with differing voltages. We have a straight line, so we know that our waveforms are in phase, or at least very, very close. However, now the ratio is approximately 3 volts per volt, which tells us that the amplitude of our signal from channel 2 is 3 times greater than that of our signal from channel 1. And really, we can sort of see this in the waveform display above. And again, if the signals were out of phase, we could tell. At 45 degrees, we see our Lissajou curve. And we would see this again at 135 degrees, 225 degrees, and 315 degrees. As we move up to 90 degrees, we don't have a circle this time, but rather an ellipse, and we would see this again at 270 degrees. And as we move to 180 degrees, we have our original line reflected across the y-axis again. So I've already showed you how the XY display represents waveforms of equal frequency with varying voltage and phase. However, just as the XY display was very effective in detecting phase and voltage differences, it is also very effective in detecting frequency differences. For example, I will set channel 1 to 1 MHz and channel 2 to 2 MHz and align the phase, and we see what looks like a sort of figure 8 or infinity. And as we increase the phase, we can begin to see a 3D image that kind of looks like a saddle just revolving in place. We could see another example of this with the 1 to 3 ratio. But that's not all. The machine can even distinguish frequencies that differ by just a fraction of a megahertz. I set channel 1 to 1 megahertz and channel 2 to 1.001 megahertz, and we can see this kind of square here. If I change the channels so that they differ by 1 1 millionth of a megahertz, or just 1 hertz, and that's one part per million difference, we can still see this square here. In fact, the machine can detect frequency differences much less than 1 parts per million. Even with a frequency difference of an order of magnitude lesser than the previous, we can still observe a noticeable difference in frequencies. And that's really all there is to the basic functionality of using the XY display. 
Thank you for watching our video. If you'd like to learn more information, please visit www.tektronics.com support.